Hi everyone, Lady Souza here once again, and thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who are connecting with me on YouTube, if you've got this on my blog, I'm going to give you the link anyways to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed as yet to make sure that you get all my tips and tools because I have extra bonus videos always on my YouTube channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button below. Of course, my YouTube channel or my videos are definitely the place where I'm going to share with you all my tips and tools on leadership communication for entrepreneurs and people leaders. And of course, lots and loads on personal optimization or high productivity for people who want to be high achieving individuals. And I know at this point in time, all you're really doing is watching my outfit and thinking, I'm not hearing what she's saying. What is going on? Has Leah lost her rockers? Absolutely not. There is a really good reason for my get up today. And I will be sharing to you why I have this outfit on. Make sure if you can see the t-shirt. It says Fancy Sailor. I will be telling you this. And it's not going to be at the end. So for those of you who like to be tricky and just scroll to the end, it's going to happen somewhere in this video why I have on this particular t-shirt. And I'm not a t-shirt person, so it must be a very special reason why I have on this particular t-shirt which says Fancy Sailor. So I'm going to take this off so it doesn't distract you too much. Do a little refresh there. Okay, so uh, this is my February reflections. And for those of you who may not be familiar with um, Carnival in Trinidad and Tobago, where I am based and where I'm from, we just completed Carnival in Trinidad. And Carnival takes place the two days before Ash Wednesday. So on Monday and Tuesday, it's Carnival. And there are about two months of parties before that. So it's an intense time of reconnecting with friends, of having lots of fun, of self-expression, dancing, partying, and all that comes with that. Really a fun time and an extremely creative and innovative time in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'll probably put some links in the drop box below if you're not familiar with Carnival in Trinidad and Tobago. And so this month I did I did a lot of fetting. We call the parties fets, and I did a lot of partying. I did a lot of fetting, but I still got my work done. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in my February reflections today. And for me, carnival and enjoying the parties, enjoying meeting friends, dressing up, dancing, um, that's a big part of me recharging myself, actually. And in my one-to-one -one coaching programs, my signature programs, um, I cover this and I call that there are 12 types or sources of energy and balance. And probably during carnival time, I will hit about three sources of energy and balance. So it actually energizes me. I actually finish this season feeling really in shape, feeling really focused um, and really happy, actually. You know, I would have seen a lot of people and had a really nice time. But here's the thing. I also got a lot of work done. So it also forces me to really optimize my scheduling and my planning. And I'll give you an example. So there was one night I was going out and I got fully ready, you know, hair, makeup, outfit, the whole shebang. And I planned my time so that when I finished getting ready, um, I put on the air condition so I wouldn't melt. And I completed a proposal for a client. I had about an hour and a half to two hours to do that. I scheduled it. And I actually, I won that contract and I'll be doing four programs with that um, client a major um, financial institution in my region, the Caribbean region. I'm going to be doing that in March. So it's all about that scheduling, planning and making sure that you're hitting your sources of energy and balance. So that was really important for me in February. And something else I also want to touch on, of course, in my February reflections, I still made sure I got time to read. So nothing changes people in my schedule. And it was interesting. I was talking to one, um, a participant I had in a youth development program that I designed for a client 
um, that I've actually been doing for seven years now. And one of the participants um, is a young man. He's now living from uh, Trinidad. He's now living in England. And he was talking about on Twitter, he was tweeting and saying, you know, his life is pretty boring now because he's doing the same things over and over. And he's an extreme high achiever. And, you know, I replied to him and I said, you know what, I actually think boring is pretty cool because boring for me is really having a system in place that is going to ensure that I achieve the things that I want to achieve and I do the things that I want to do. So in a sense, I'm pretty boring like that. So I'm going to share with you the books that I made sure that I read during this month of February. So the first one is actually a book that is definitely on my reading list in my leadership development programs for entrepreneurs and people leaders and its execution the discipline of getting things done by larry bossidy and ram charan um this is really when it comes to there are a lot of books on getting doing things right planning um you know, there's so many of them. There are lots of them right there on my, my shelf, getting things done. Um, but this one is really looking at the topic of execution um, as a structure within an organization. But you can apply what is in here to your daily life, whether it is you are frontline in an organization or you're the managing director. Um, I definitely swear by this book. So I didn't read it for the first time, but I revisited it in February. And there was a very strategic reason why. Um, again, going back now in January, I've, well, actually before January, I would have set my goals for the year. And I want to make sure that I stay on track. And of course, execution is now the key here. Um, so I'm making sure that I stay motivated, but I already have a plan in place. So this is important. Um, so this isn't really, I'm going to recommend this one to just everybody, If especially if you are struggling with um, really getting your plans into place. Um, if you are struggling with figuring out why don't things happen um, and you think you have a plan in place and it's working, I would say get this book. And then the second book that I did read, this one I actually read for the first time, it's uh, it's in Japanese, part of it actually, half is in Japanese, half is in English. I don't speak Japanese, by the way. Um, it's an introductory hand handbook to Japan and its people. So why am I reading, why did I read this book? And it's not because that I'm going to Japan um, which would be great because that's one of my dream destinations. But one of my one-to-one -one leadership coaching clients is a Japanese national living in Trinidad. He's a manager and he took it upon himself. He knew that he wanted to better connect with his um, Trinity, his Trini uh, employees, his team members. And when we met and I did an analysis of where he was, what would be of most value to him, it's actually what I call cross-cultural communication. And um, for those of you who may not know, I know I share bits of my story as I go along. Um, I've actually lived and worked in three other countries. I've lived and worked in France, Italy, and Switzerland. And for me, culture, understanding culture and understanding how to survive and thrive in other cultures is an important skill i think for anybody who is thinking of doing that and there there are certain skills that you really need to make sure that you master and it's it's not just enough to know good communication when we are dealing with making sure that we connect with a foreign culture um, there are certain things that you need to do and you need to put into place that you need to practice. And um, I'm probably going to have some feedback, share some feedback from uh, my clients in the future with you because it's been an amazing experience. And in just even one month, he had amazing results. So I read this book because I did not actually know much about Japanese culture. 
Um, I do know how to help people connect in cross-cultural communication, but in learning more about Japanese culture, I wanted to learn more about it so I could really understand his wiring. Um, you know, I use that word sometimes. So I want to understand his wiring so I could help him better connect to people here. So that's the book that I actually completed in February. And at this point in time, I'm going to share with you, of course, very quickly, why am I wearing this T-shirt and why did I have on this hat at the beginning? So uh, actually somebody who I have worked with on two of my youth development programs um, and who I would call now a friend, uh, he's a teacher at a school. I'm just going to pull my notes. He's a teacher at a school in Trinidad called Faisabad Secondary School. And his students in Form 6 or high school, the senior students in high school, as part of their school project for their course in the Business for the Arts, they decided to create a business entitled Traditions in the Schoolyard, Tizzy, T-I-S-Y, and they came up with different t-shirts uh, with pictures of characters from traditional mass from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, they were so, I was so happy they sent a t-shirt for me. I'm so proud to wear this. I'm so proud of what they're doing, these young people. Um, and I'm going to put some links below if you'd like to support what these amazing young people are doing all on their own. Um, please feel feel really go and support them. I'm just saying disclaimer, they actually don't even know that I'm doing this. Um, but I'm just really glad to see that young people in my country are doing something so positive. So I'll put the links in the drop box uh, below. Make sure and click on that. And they also have an Instagram and I'll put that in as well. So there you got the reason for the t-shirt. And I'm just going to end by saying, why do I do these reflections? I, I say that we don't stay back, but we look back to move forward. So it's really good every time we have a win or as we go along planning our year, that we take a moment to pause. What was good in the month? What wasn't good as well? Um, what did I learn so that I can improve in the month to come? Okay, everybody, looking forward to a fantastically busy March. And as always, I love to hear your feedback and anything you'd like for me to talk about more in the areas of communication, leadership, and high productivity. Have an excellent March, everyone. Bye.